Hey students, I'm sure you've heard about the GMAT going online thanks to the COVID-19 crisis. Now what does it mean for you as a student? It means that if you're taking the GMAT online, you do not have access to a traditional pen and paper scribbling pad. Instead, you would have to use what is called as a whiteboard. Now I sense that many of you are skeptical about using a whiteboard. Will I be able to solve problems if I don't put pen to paper? Will I be able to solve problems within a reasonable amount of time? And so on and so forth. So in this video, I want to demonstrate to you that if you put in a few hours of practice on the whiteboard, you will find it extremely easy to use and you may even start preferring it to traditional pen and paper. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to take a classical inference question from critical reasoning and I'm going to show you how to effectively use a whiteboard to solve an inference question. So let's do precisely that. Let's take an inference question. Yeah, you can see this on the screen. It's an inference question from Scholarinium. If you're an EGMAT student, you're aware of what that is. And you must be aware of where you can find the whiteboard. Here you see it on the left. And uh, the thing about the whiteboard is uh, the EGMAT whiteboard is very similar to what you can expect to see on the GMAT. And uh, the good things about the whiteboard, it is free flow. You can actually move it around. You can use it to cover the options while you're doing analysis. You can use it to cover the questions when you're doing option choice analysis. And you can size it as you may, as your as per your preference, you can size it. So before we move on, I would like you to spend a couple of minutes analyzing the passage. That would help so that you can understand what I'm going to do with the whiteboard. So students, I hope you have gone through the question. If so, let us move on with the analysis. So what do we know? Yatin is a prestigious institution offering an MBA. Okay, five years ago, the number of students from a commerce background somewhat lower than that from engineering. Okay, since then the number of commerce has increased, but at a lower rate Then has a number of engineering, which is nearly tripled. Which of the following must be true about Yatin College if the statements above are true? So it's a classic inference question. So now I'm going to use the whiteboard, typically how I would use a pen and paper for this question. So for example, I'm going to draw a few lines. You'll understand why, because we are going to do proportion comparisons, right? And then I'll introduce text boards. Double click, you can always add a text box. So let's talk about people from an engineering background. Then let's talk about people from a commerce background. And what do we know about the numbers? Yes, engineering, has increased, has nearly tripled. So let's take engineering as a base. Let's assume engineering is 100. So if it's nearly tripled, say it should have been 300, let's put 290, nearly tripled. And what do we know about the commerce students? Somewhat lower than the engineering initially, right? So let's put 80. And this is increased, this number is increased, but not at the same, not by the same margins. So let's say it's doubled. Engineering is nearly triple. Let's say this one has doubled. So now before I move on to looking at the option choices, what can I analyze from the data I have? Proportion, I can see E by C or C by E. So let's take engineering by commerce and see what we get. So this is 100 by 80, that's typically 1.2. And this one is 290 by 160, that's almost 1.8 somewhere around 1.8. So before I even look at the option choices, I already have some analysis here. I know that the proportion of the ratio of engineering students to commerce students at Yatin has increased from five years ago till today. So I already have that ready now. With that, let's look at the option choices. Yeah, we really don't need Yeah, this is all I need to analyze the option choices now. The number of MBA graduates with an engineering degree has risen sharply over the last five years. Seems tempting, but definitely not true because our analysis and our passage is very specific to Yarton. I cannot generalize about MBA graduates in the country. So option A is irrelevant. 
now let's also talk about how how we can do option analysis let's add that say option a is 1 option b is 2 option 3 is c option 4 is d option 5 is e now I, all I have to do is go to a pencil. So number of MBA graduates with an engineering degree in the country has risen sharply over the last five years. Cannot be true because we are talking about Yarton, not about the general country. So this is straight rejected. The ratio of commerce background to engineering background MBA graduates has increased in the past five years. Uh, this actually goes against what we have proven. If E by C has increased, that means C by A should have decreased. So this is actually opposite of the correct answer. Let's go to number C, option number C, that's my option three. The number of MBA graduates with an engineering degree hired by companies at Yarton has significantly increased over MBA graduates with other degrees. Irrelevant because we do not know anything about who hired who. Hiring is not part of the passage. It's out of scope, easy to eliminate. Let's come to option D. The proportion of common students entering other fields of study than MBA has increased. Yet again is out of scope. We do not know anything about other fields of study. We only know about common students taking MBA in Yarton. It's very, very specific. The passage is very specific. So this is an easy to eliminate option. So lastly, let's look at option E. The ratio of MBA students with an engineering background to those with a commerce background in Yarton has increased in the last five years. Definitely what we arrived at through our analysis. 1.8, 1.2. We can see the ratio of engineering to commerce has increased over the last five years. So voila we have arrived at a correct answer and we have used the whiteboard this is typically I'm just replicating what you would do on pen to paper the important point to realize is use short forms you don't need to type engineering you don't need to type commerce if you are comfortable without the table you don't have to draw these grid lines as well the idea is to familiarize yourself with the whiteboard spend some time with the whiteboard figure out your own mechanisms what I've given is some general tips. I would typically use one, two, three, four, five. I would use short forms where I can see it. I would place this where I want to see, where I see fit to use it better. But overall, the idea is if you spend a few hours on this, figuring out your own tips and tricks, apart from the you know best practices that I've shared, you will see that using the whiteboard is actually easy and you might start preferring it as well. So I hope this video helped you. Thank you.